All right, guys, so those of you watching the extras, this will be highly beneficial for you, okay? Um, our first problem here, so it looks scary. 16x to the fourth minus 81. Well, let's just pretend it were 16x squared minus 81. So let's pretend it was a difference of squares because really it just is. Well, that you would hopefully recognize would be 4x plus 9 and 4x minus 9 okay having the difference of squares well really we have the same thing going on here x to the fourth is a perfect square so now what we would break it up into is 4x squared plus 9 and 4x squared minus 9 all right, very similar, only it's x squared. Cool thing from here, factoring completely. Now, 4x squared does not break down. It doesn't factor. But 4x squared minus 9, again, we have a difference of squares. So this is similar to this question here. Um, would be 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. Okay, so we got a lot going on here. We have 4x squared plus 9. And then we have these two other pieces. Kind of cool, okay? It just keeps on breaking down. Okay, and that's really it there. All right, this one's very similar. So um, I'll actually come back to it in a little bit, or you can try it again. But I want to go through these other ones. All right, this one here. Oh, my, x to the eighth. Wow. Okay, again, let's look for common factors first. Make it easier. 2, and I see a p squared. So 2p squared, let's take that out from everything. p to the sixth plus... 5p to the third plus uh, 6. <clears throat> okay, 2p squared is going to hang out out front. And don't be afraid of these here. Now, p to the sixth. The cool thing with these, these are always going to be p3 times a p3. Okay, and it's just like factoring before. Factors of 6 to add to 5 um, would be 2 and 3. And if you don't believe me, well, let's take p to the third times 2 would be 2p to the third. And let's take p to the third times 3 would be 3p to the third. Both of those add up to 5p to the third. So don't let these bigger exponents scare you, okay? You just tackle them very similarly, okay? 2p squared, um, then we have p to the third minus 2, or plus 2, and we have p to the third minus 3, okay? That is completely factored, so we have three more pieces, okay? Awesome stuff with that, okay? Oh, number 6 is the same as number four. Okay, so we don't really need to worry about it. Let's take care of this one then. Okay, so g to the fourth minus 625. Um, 625 is a perfect square. What is the square root or perfect? Yeah, perfect square. Um, da, 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 square root 625. Hey, it's 25. Okay. Um, so again, really, it's like a special perfect square. Okay, so this is really going to be 4g squared plus 25, and 4g squared minus 25, and we can break this down even more. Break it down now. So we got 2g minus 5. And a 2g plus 5. And our 4g squared plus 
25. Whew, breaking the sweat. But if you're watching, I'm sure you um, hopefully are recognizing these different things. Again, it's all about practice. 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 Alrighty, so let's take care of the common factors. Common factors, what are they? Who's got them? Uh, looks like a 4 and a T squared. Okay, they all share all that jazz, leaving us with T to the 4th. Minus 5T squared plus 6. Okay. Okay. Don't forget about 4t squared. He wants to be at the party. In between here, this is kind of old school factoring. t to the fourth is really t squared and t squared. Six, we need to add to a negative five now. So negative six and positive one will get me there. Meaning I have a t squared minus six and a t squared plus 1, and the 4t out front. Let's put it all together. And awesome from there. Um, you might want to double check. In this case, it doesn't. But t squared minus 6 is not a perfect square. So sometimes things will continue to break down from here. Um, another practice here. Oh my gosh, m to the 12th and 7 and 2. What, Mr. Dvorsky? It'll be all right. Um, let's see, do they all share a 3? I believe they do. 51 divided by 3 is just 17. So they share a 3. And they share an m squared. That's going to leave me with m to the 10th. Um, 54 divided by 3 is really 18. M to the 5th plus 17. And you probably recognize from here. Okay? M to the 10th is really M to the 5th times M to the 5th. Okay, 17. There's only two factors of 17. And they conveniently add to our 18. So we have m to the 5th plus 17, m to the 5th plus 1, and putting it, wow, putting it all together, 3m squared times the quantity 5m to the 5th plus 17, m to the 5th plus 1. Awesome stuff. Okay. Great job if you watch those extra 10. It will highly, highly benefit you. Um, it's there for you either way. So um, certainly enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thanks.